Hey guys, welcome or welcome back. Tisha here, back with another Sisterwise Season 12 review. Now, some of you all may get mad at me for this, but I don't care. <laughs> I don't. I just have to be honest with what I'm about to say. I do not care because in my opinion, all the adults in this family have failed Isabel. Yes, I said all of them. We are talking about five adults. Five adults sitting around talking about how bad this young lady's spinal curvature is, how much pain she's been in. We see her telling us while crying how much it hurts and about the bruises she has and all these other things. And yet we're sitting here for years, because I'm, this is going to keep going on, apparently, talking about whether or not she should have a surgery that will improve some level of her discomfort. Anyways, let me go ahead and start the episode. So it's St. Patrick Day and everyone is coming to Mary's for dinner, even Cody. Um, Audrey and Leon are there too. The bird lets us know that she noticed that Leon has lost a lot of weight and Leon said that it's because they're happy. I don't know why she felt the need to point that out, but I'm going to try to feel like she wasn't making a dig there. Audrey, in their eyes, the family's eyes, is a perfect fit because Audrey gets along well with the family. The Browns remind us of how great their kids also get along in spite who their mom is and we see them hugging each other and they're interacting and Leon is like, gee, what's up? And you know, I know you weren't gonna give me a handshake and they embrace and every time I see Garrison, I'm like, oh. Um, as they're talking about how close they are and you see it, I'm wondering what created the change I mean, we kind of can come to some of the conclusions, but what changed that we went from this to what we see now? Everyone gathers around the kitchen. We see an awkward exchange between Cody and Mary because he wants her to explain the food situation, even though it's all out on her wet bar. It's kind of obvious that there's pasta here. There's some salad there. There's some sauce there, but he wants her to explain what it is she doesn't feel like it's an explanation and she's basically like we have food there's pasta and there's salad it's a lot of passive aggressiveness at times with the two of them we even see mary and audrey uh talking and mary tells audrey to take a plate so you can do a demonstration which is another way of pa being passive aggressive based on what cody says as she's saying this, I noticed that Cody was whispering in Robin's ear. Do I think that it was about uh, what Mary was saying? No, but they had their own little thing going on over there. Robin was smiling and stuff. There are times where the two of them are connected to each other in a way that you don't see him do around the other wives. Normally it's something that he would do when it's more one-on-one. -on -one. But here, even though he told us for a long time that he's had to, to hide his love, I don't feel like he's hiding his love. Cody says uh, that Caleb should pray because Caleb has the best prayers. He likes that he shows um, up in his prayers with gratitude and respect. And Caleb says, you know, you want to know what the secret is? The secret is that I pray from the heart. Kind of hard to do if you're like Cody and you sometimes seem like you don't have one. Cody let us know that his kids are trite and tend to, to be that way um, when it comes to, to blessings. They just want to bless the food. At the ages that they are, because some of them are not able to think independently, they're going to put out what is put into them. So for example, if you're not taking them to church any longer, if you aren't holding church at your homes anymore, if you're not taking them to an environment where their faith is being cultivated or they're learning new things, what do you expect? You aren't teaching them. What do you expect? Now for your older ones, they've all gone down the path that they've went down. You have Leon, who was uh, super into your faith to now wanting to have nothing to do with it and is not even calling themselves a Christian, but is saying that they're spiritual. So there are different aspects to things 
And I'm just like, if you want something to be a particular way while they're young, even though when they turn adults, they're going to come to their own conclusions. But why they're young, lead by example. It's not that hard. Christine says she grew up thinking that the outside world was a threat until she had a conversation with the Christian. She's not sure what denomination that they were. But after that connection with that man, she realized that his connection to God was a lot stronger than hers. And she just didn't understand how this could be. And I feel like it could be that way because you don't have to necessarily be a part of my belief system in order to have thoughts and, and beliefs and your own connection with God. I am of a firm belief, and I've said this time and time again, that I feel like no one uh, religion has it all right. Because there are things that I love from certain religions and that I practice from certain things. Example, I don't eat pork. It, when I grew up in Seventh-day Adventist Church, I was taught that certain things were unclean. And it's something that I just, I still don't eat. Other people in my church don't feel that way. But I also go to a non-denominational church. Um, I've, I've been to, you know, other... <sighs> I don't even need to talk about all that. I was about to go down the whole thing. The point that I was about to say is that just because I don't think like you or because I don't practice what you practice doesn't mean I haven't created my own relationship with whatever being that you follow. I went down a whole... I wasn't even trying to go that route. This is why I'm supposed to stick to my notes, you guys, because when I get off, of course, I, I just be all over the globe. Um, we see them grab food and then, sorry, I'm just thinking like, <laughs> we see them grab food and then we see the St. Patty's Day cake with the leprechaun and the rainbow. It's a moment between Audrey and Leon and Mary. You see, um, Mary and Leon do like this, looking like each other for that brief moment. Um, because Mary explains that she got the rainbow, not because of the holiday, it's nice to see Leon and Mary laughing. And I think that Audrey had to do with a lot of that. I would love to know some of the conversations that uh, Leon has had with Audrey because it seems like the both of them are extremely in tune with one another. And it seems like Audrey brings out a more caring side, a more tolerant side of Leon. Now, could that be because Leon is um, embracing themselves more in who they are? Yes, that could very much be the case. I just noticed that since Audrey has been in the picture, Leon just seems to be lighter. Cody let us know that a lot of these uh, religious, a lot of these religions would not agree with people like Leon and Audrey. And he's just trying to live a life that is like what Christ would do. So they're going to get love and tolerance from him. And I hate that he uses the word tolerance because I just don't agree with the word tolerance when you're talking about this situation. Do you accept it or not? It doesn't seem like he does. And it's okay, but don't act like because you tolerate it that you support it. It doesn't, when you say you tolerate it, the, well, when he says he tolerates it, I just feel like it's just a way to cover up the fact that he doesn't support it. As I said before, in my opinion, there's a difference. Let me know what y'all think down below. The bird says at school, they've had kids in middle school talking about their sexual preference. Christine says that, you know, with being in, in Vegas, they've been exposed to a lot of things. And it's just not something that her kids or or their kids in general seem to be bothered by because they were talking about whether or not the younger kids see it. They're not sitting there making out in front of each other. Um, a lot of, I mean, I don't think it's something that they would notice right away unless it was something that they were looking for, for the little ones. Now, the teens and, you know, the, the eight and nine-year-olds, you know, that'd be different. But, like, Saul, Saul ain't looking for that. He don't, he don't understand that. Not at five. Um, Isabel, scoliosis. So, in the previous episode, we learned that Christine found out that Isabel had scoliosis due to a screening that was done at the school. We learned that they started her off with a nighttime brace. And then because of how quickly the curve was progressing, they decided that she needed to wear a daytime one as well. 
because they wanted to try to prevent it from getting more severe. So Christine has brought out the x-rays for the family to see. As soon as Cody holds up these x-rays, Christine begins to get choked up because Christine, unlike Cody to me, seems to understand the severity of this situation and is very much so aware of the pain that her child is in. I'm sitting here watching these episodes at Cody then and I don't understand Cody now because Cody then was there at some of the appointments and Cody then saw this and Cody then heard about the pain. And even at the end of the episode, Christine's giving Cody then um, thanks for how he's been supportive and emotionally aware for her. And how do we go from that to I can't go to your surgery because I'm going to be away from these kids too long? I don't get it. Janelle looks at this x-ray and says, looking at this x-ray feels like science fiction because of how badly her spine is curved. Robin says that it's scary and it, it blows her mind. So a year ago, she was at a 26 degree curve. As of that other x-ray, she was at a 38, which means she's going through all of this additional pain with the brace being placed on her on top of that, and it's not even really working. So it's not stopping it. In fact, it's just progressing and getting worse. Christine lets us know that Isabel is embarrassed and humiliated by the brace and that it makes her look bigger than she actually is. Janelle says it's just as concerning to her when she thinks about this situation as one of her kids getting sick that there is a certain degree of separation, but she's concerned. I personally feel like I'm not buying it. And I'm going to tell y'all why. And once again, let me know what you think down below. I feel like if this was one of Janelle's kids, I feel like because of how Janelle is when it comes to her children, because of how Janelle fights for her kids, I do not think that Cody would have been able to talk Janelle um, out of of doing this or postponing the surgery as long as he was able to do that with Christine. I think that Janelle would have got a second, third, fourth job, whatever it was that she had to do to ensure that her kids weren't in pain because Janelle isn't as naive some, you know, about certain things. And Janelle just seems to just get into action when it comes to her kids. She may, you know, Terry in other areas, but I don't see the docile side of Janelle when it comes to her children, maybe for other things, but not her kids. Um, Cody says that the doctor says that if it doesn't correct that she has to have, or they recommend <laughs> it's not surgery. Literally, that's what he did. They, he says they take a piece of jewelry that's made out of titanium or stainless steel and they attach it to your spine and basically run it down to straighten up your back. And I'm sitting there listening to him and I'm like, okay, maybe I'm challenged, but we're going to call this a piece of jewelry. It's a rod. Call it what it is. Explain it the way that it needs to be explained. If they are attaching things to it, it's not jewelry. It's screws and bolts and whatever else like spinal fusions and things of that nature isn't just oh we're gonna put this there it changes your body it does your body has something foreign in it in order for it to be a certain way so you kind of sitting there talking about it and calling it jewelry i just feel like you're you're you, you're minimizing what this is we're reminded that a lot of polygamous communities don't utilize hospitals because they're afraid that they'll find out that the father has multiple children. I don't understand that aspect of it just because there's guys out there that have multiple kids and they're not married. I'm just saying multiple kids with multiple women and they're not married. I used to watch uh, Maury a lot. <laughs> and you see it up there all the time i'm just saying um so christine is planning on taking her to this place with a team of chiropractors that tries a non-surgical approach where they do exercises that are supposed to change the spine from the inside so she's going to be going for two weeks in may but it's really expensive we're not told how expensive it is 
we see Cody and Mary are going into this therapy session, even though at this point they're divorced. There's a whole bunch of stuff that I'm probably going to leave out because this was a long segment. If there's something that I left out that you want to talk about, put it down in the comment section because listening to them go back and, and forth is like, okay, it is clear that Cody has flown the coop. He has left Mary's nest and went to the the birds, okay? We hear again how they're struggling. Mary has says at this point, they're trying to figure out how to even be friends. And it's, you know, not, it's easy for them not to work on things and to just push things down. But little things like them driving together to this therapy session is a big deal. And even he said it when he came in. And I was like, are you freaking kidding me? You guys are giving yourself kudos after 20 years of marriage that you rode in a vehicle together. I don't understand how it got to this point, even before our eyes. What was going on when the cameras weren't around? They went to a friendly dinner after their last session because Nancy suggested that they get to know each other and start fresh. It just seems to me like after 20 years of them not knowing each other, that speaks to their inability to be together. And Nancy, to me, should have been like, cut it. It's not going to work. You all are too far gone at this point. But I'm not Nancy. Mary tells Nancy about the house she wants to buy with the help of the family that her great-great-grandfather built the house in the 1800s. He tells Nancy um, he's not like Mary. He just wants to be like, I would never buy this thing. And the wives don't feel like they should buy it either. I don't know when the wives said that they would never buy it. I remember last episode, we saw them talking about it and they got a little irritated with the fact that she switched it up and said that her mom wanted to stay there. But I thought they told Mary that they need to, that Mary needs to figure out what she's going to do with her mother first before they consider, you know, their next step. So Cody says He's at therapy to try to figure out how to tell Mary in a nice way that this is a mistake, which makes me wonder whatever conversations, other conversations have been had. Um, this was the best decision, in my opinion, that Mary could have made for herself was to get this home because without this, she wouldn't have anything for herself with what has happened now with Flagstaff. In my opinion, she should have kept her house in Vegas too. Because Cody was so quick to tell all of them to move and to try to sell those houses when you probably would have been better off trying to rent out one of those houses and get an income like that. Because look how long it took for them to sell all of them. And that you would have something of your own. But I don't. I think these people really thought that they were going to stay with him. I don't understand how, but Mary says... Best scenario is we buy the house and my mom lives in it and she's closer. Cody says he knows it's important to her, but if the rules were reversed, he would not get it even if it was that important to him. And then I got to thinking, right? Do I think it's kind of selfish of Mary to want the family to put all this stuff into her house? Yes. Did I think it was kind of selfish of Mary to expect to have all of those rooms in a home that nobody was going to visit and that Leon was soon moving out of? Yes. But I thought about what they did when it came to purchasing Robin's home in um, Flagstaff. Mary put money into that and Janelle put money into that. So I could say what I want to say, and he could say what he wants to say, but you're saying you would never do anything like that. You would never jeopardize a family like that, but you would do it for Robin. He did it when it came to Robin's home. It was important to him that they had that big behind McMansion because he wanted to have something to show for his move because I think at a certain point, whether he'll ever admit it or not, Cody realized that that land that they purchased on, on um what is that, Coyote Pass, had a lot more work and a lot more money needs to be put into it than he realized. There's nothing out there. 
You can't create what you had in Vegas when Vegas at least had some things out there like utilities and there's nothing out there. Cody says the house is overpriced by, in his mind, at least double. He doesn't think that it's a good idea to buy the house, but he sees a twinkle in Mary's eye that lets him know that she's probably going to do this regardless, even if it's overpriced. He says if he doesn't, if the house doesn't show a profit, then Mary, please don't ask for us to put money into it. He said, Mary has a drive and Mary has the ability to push everybody out of her way to do what she wants to do. And I was like, okay, so you're going to compliment her in one breath and then you're going to say something kind of negative about her in the same sentence. He's not putting the rest of the family at risk for this and it's that simple. He says, they just went to a march in Utah. There are laws now that are there that are against polygamy, against plural families like theirs in Utah. And until the law completely changes, he doesn't want to have a business there. And I'm confused because I thought polygamy was wrong in all states. Maybe it's not a felony, but isn't it a crime in various other states? Y'all let me know because maybe I'm 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 wrong. Either way, it's just another excuse. Just tell her, I don't want you. Because he doesn't. It's clear. Mary says that him saying that is basically like what he always did, where it's just like, okay, you go ahead and do that alone. And I'll just be over here like, yeah, that's a good idea, but do it by yourself. In confession, she tells us that she pulled back a few years ago because everything that she did was always wrong and there was always a problem with it. And she felt like being not being in this dynamic would be the best thing. She wants to now talk and she wants things to be better and she doesn't want to do this on her own and she wants emotional support. But we know that's not what he wants to do. She wants to get comfortable again um, for the trust, for the conversations. And more than that, she wants intimacy. He feels like they're they're missing the passion and at this point it's platonic he says from what i gather mary is ready to go back into a very deep and intimate relationship and i am not the fact that he said that let me know that it is truly over for him, that Cody doesn't want any part of Mary's cookie. There have been times where my man got on my last nerve. <laughs> but do you think I was gonna stop myself from having a good time? No, I was not. I won't go to answer myself. He can't stand her. He cannot, when I say he cannot, sorry, y'all, my nose ring is turned funny and I don't want y'all to think I got a, 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 that's why I hate these L ones, a uh, oogie, because I don't, it's, it's just driving me nuts. I'm like, what in the world? Um. Anyways, that's not going to stop the show, but here it's, it stopped a long time ago, which we learned later on in more recent seasons that it's it's it been stopped like it's been years since anything and that's crazy anyways he says that the past 10 years before he was hands up and done basically with the relationship he thought she was choosing to leave and done with the family when the whole catfish thing happened which she was ready to leave he left her emotionally a long time ago and I think the catfish was the final nail in the coffin for him because that did something else because not only did it come out that you did it but it bruised his ego and if he heard what I heard he he don't want to have nothing to do with you he says that he's worried that she's gonna you know have romantic feelings for him and he won't how many different ways did this man have to tell her that he didn't want her? He's saying it in so many different ways right here. He's not in a place where he wants a romantic relationship or he wants to skip down the road. He said it again right there. He doesn't want the romance that they had because of the dysfunction that they had. He said it again right there. So was the relationship always bad? 
Was it always dysfunctional? Because we're equating romance and dysfunction together. What in the world was going on with these two? According to him, if it weren't for plural marriage, they wouldn't be together. Plural marriage is what made them survive because when the marriage wasn't going right, they had other things. In other words, plural marriage made them sub survive because when he was tired of her, he could go to the next wife. He's already told us that this is what he's done. She feels differently. She feels like if they were monogamous, that they wouldn't have some of the problems that they have. Nancy... This is my mic. Is this thing on? Is this thing on? Why didn't you tell? <laughs> Why didn't you tell? I need a different mic. Why didn't you tell the two of these people that they did not be, need to be together? Why didn't you tell Mary to run? Why didn't you tell Mary, if your husband doesn't want to be intimate with you, there's a bigger problem? Why did you tell them to stay together when they're already legally divorced? Why didn't you let her know at this point, they're not going to be in a relationship. They're not barely going to have a friendship. As I sat there and I watched this, I felt like this is exactly what he was trying to do to Christine. Which is why Christine said what she said to him when she was like, you're not going to do to me what you did to Mary. I don't want to be her. Because all of the wives saw how he treated her. They all saw this. They all saw that he was not being with Mary. Mary wasn't even in the rotation. Mary stopped being in the rotation before they even got to Flagstaff. And that's what he did to Christine. And Christine was like, uh-uh, I saw you do it with her. You're not going to do it with me. You're not going to put me into this friend role and have me being a friend of yours while you come over here how you want to and you get to be married and have a whole functioning relationship over there. You're not going to do that to me because that's what he did to Mary. And he tried it with Christine and Christine had enough of it after a while. Back to the doctors. We hear from Isabel again how hard wearing the brace is for her physically and emotionally. We see the same clip that we saw a few episodes ago that it hurts all over, that she has bruises and it squeezes her and she can't find clothes to wear with it and it's awful. She says to other people who are battling scoliosis, if you have this, just know that you aren't alone, that you need to embrace it and there are people who have it even worse than you. I hate that she went through this for as long as she did. I love how optimistic she is, but it's not always easy to be optimistic, especially when you're in that degree of pain and it causes you that much discomfort. And it sucks that they didn't do this procedure for what, like another five years? They go to the doctors. She was measuring at 38 last time she went there. He lets them know that if she measures at 40, they may want, me, may want to reconsider some things in terms of the brace because after 40 degrees, it's harder for you to get the, the spine to adjust. So it's not as effective. He likes to do surgery usually once you get at the 50%. I mean, degrees. This doctor is saying that he doesn't feel like the exercise because they asked about the exercise and stuff like that. And he's like, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't really feel like it will work on her curve, but it will help her with her core because ladies who wear the core or people who wear the, the um, brace for a long time end up losing some of their core strength. As she's standing up and getting her x-ray and they're behind her, she has her shirt on and everything and you can see the curvature in her back. It's sad. I was like, poor baby. So he does his measurements. It's now 40 degrees. She's probably going to have to have surgery. Christine is talking about how um, it's going to be ugly. She's going to have to wear that. The She's going to go to the beach with the ugly scar. And she's going to have her, her prom with the ugly scar. And this with the ugly scar. And I'm like, Christine, don't go there. 
I, and she's going to have limited range. I understand that she's in a dark place, as she said, but you got to watch what comes out because I just, I didn't like it. When she first said it, it was making me like, why are you sitting there calling it an ugly scar? Don't, don't call it that. You, your daughter at some point is going to see this. And then I was like, you know what? Don't get mad at her. That's how she was feeling in the moment. She admitted that she was in a dark place. And with the scar that she has now, I don't think, I don't remember her calling it ugly. I think she said it was cool or rad or something. So I'm going to give her a, a, a little pass on that. She apologized for going dark as she cries. She said that, you know, she tries to be strong in front of her daughter, but her daughter is such a sweet person and her daughter doesn't complain. The doctor says at the very worst, she may pro um, progress like a degree a month, which would mean that they don't need to consider surgery, if so, until like another year or so out. It's baby shower time. They're having a Jack and Jill baby shower at Janelle's. They start with Cody telling everyone that he'll only answer to grandpa. It's always got to be about him at some point. Like, why are you making an announcement and you're not throwing the shower? We see Caleb and the bald eagle get blindfolded. They have to change baby diaper. It's like a cloth one where they got to wrap them up and, and tape it while they're blindfolded. And we find out from Maddie that Christine said that in this whole time that they've been married, that Cody only changed five diapers that would be a problem for me um i don't understand how they say so much that he was a great dad and this and he couldn't even change a diaper like that's basic stuff for me change a diaper they um thought that caleb won because he finished first but caleb didn't do the the like caleb was wrapped around him he got he forgot to get the middle whereas cody got the midsection so cody won we see them open a few gifts and that was it. So I guess the baby shower was very uneventful because we didn't see, it wasn't even five minutes of the footage. We later see Maddie and Caleb have a 3D HD ultrasound. She's going to be doing a home birth because she says the U.S. makes it sound like it's less natural than it is, but it's very natural to have a home birth. I get what she's saying, but please understand that the birthing process needs to be taken seriously. Your body is going through trauma while you have those um, contractions to the point where science say that they don't understand scientifically while, why some women while having a contraction don't have a stroke because that's how like serious it can get. So make sure you do whatever is best for your body, but also pay attention to your body while you're laboring if you do do it at home because, you, you know, you want to be safe. So Maddie's going to have a midwife soon. As she's trying to see Axel's face at the ultrasound, he's not cooperating. Caleb says that he thinks that he's going to have a temper. Maddie says, don't say that. He's, he's probably just not going to want to be bothered with, you know, the Brown family chaos. And we then see different pictures of him, different imaging, and he is a cutie by a cute little face. They want to have three to four kids, like two to two years apart. And Caleb says that one of the things that he wants to make sure is that they give her body enough time to recover. And I appreciate the fact that he said that, because one of the things that I'm realizing, especially in, in terms of um, the book that we're reading 50 years in polygamy, a lot of them don't show the women any any time. Like they just want them to keep popping out babies and they're not giving their bodies a chance to respond. And every time you get pregnant, you're changing the, the woman's body. It takes like a year for a woman's body to recover from that pregnancy. So just something to think about. Uh, we see them take Isabel to her scoliosis boot camp. The imaging that they do says that she has a 45 degree curve, which they say give it give or take a few degrees. Janelle says that Isabel has always been very stubborn and strong willed. So she thinks that she'll be able to pull this off. And as I'm watching her doing the different exercises and wearing different things, I'm wondering if this really helped. Y'all let me know if it helped at all down below. Um, we see them wrapping her up. We meet Marina, who has been coming there for over a year. She was doing good at one point, saw good results, and then she stopped doing her exercises. So the curve started getting, um, I guess, significantly increased. And now she's back. Christine is just happy that Isabel is excited about doing the exercises and she's not in the pain that she was with having to wear the brace. 
uh, we find out from, uh, no, let me not do that yet. Cody and Christine head out on a date to the farmer's market and the river. Cody tells us his early years with Christine were fun. Christine was fun. And the moment that things got real, in my opinion, which is when Robin came along, Cody didn't like that. Christine admits that she had a hard time while pregnant with Truly. I'm not surprised that she had a hard time in the book. We find out that she had a terrifying miscarriage before Truly. So why wouldn't she have a hard time? And then you get married six weeks after Truly was born, which means that she, at six weeks of a baby, the baby's not even two months and you go away for almost two weeks on a honeymoon. Yeah, yeah. And then add on top of that, that you were courting a woman who lived like five hours away. And when you went to see her, you were gone for a whole weekend. So these are all things to consider. You're acting like she just did this out of nowhere. He said most of their problems were about, and I may get in trouble for this, petty insecurity. Why kid does it have to be petty? It's not petty. It's her feelings. Validate them. You say petty insecurity there, but then later on you talk about how you have to validate her feelings. If you validated her feelings, you wouldn't have put petty in front of that word. He said, okay, she can't expect for him to constantly focus on her. According to him, most husbands don't do that to any of their wives, even in monogamy. I don't think that Christine was as bad as he's trying to make her seem to be in this clip. I think that she just wanted him to be present. We saw him when he was over there being on his phone and laying down on the bed and not paying attention to the kids and her. So don't sit there and act like she brought this out of thin air. He said she needs to learn, she needs to learn that he had to focus on the big picture and he needed to learn that he needed to focus on Christine. Christine says that she's grateful for Robin because Robin is unconditionally loving. And I was like, what? She said that she told Robin that she did not know how to be a friend to her. And, and I said, okay, as soon as you told her that, best believe she told the um, bald eagle that. She said people think that she's a home wrecker. She is. And she's the opposite of that. She says she united our family, if anything else. How? How does she unite your family? What does she do? To unite your family. Besides give you some sister wives closet jewelry that you all helped her get. Everything that Robin had on her vision board, you all and coming into your family helped her get it. Whew. I don't know where my I'm I'm so I'm I'm all over the place today, y'all. I'm sorry. Um she united her family, if anything else. I said, wow, I want to see how she feels about this now. Robin says that her and Christine are closer now than they've ever been. It happened about two years ago. You see Christine doing what Cody loves the most then, which is, you know, boosting that ego and singing his praises. She tells him how she appreciates how much he's been there for Isabel and how hard it's been emotionally. But watching him with her means everything. He's learned how to validate and understand and empathize with Christine when she felt sadness. I want to know why it stopped. He said after seven years of what they went through as a family, him and Christine and even Mary, now they can rest. Mary and him have woken up to their sad situation and now they're honest about it. You're not being all the way honest because you should have told Mary that you wanted her to leave. Uh, they take the girls out bowling, Christine seeing how, you know, she is with her activity vest and how she doesn't seem to be completely uncomfortable and she's able to bowl and things of that makes her feel good. She said for the first time in a long time, she feels like they as a family could conquer what Isabel's going through. Isabel says it's giving her hope that she won't need surgery and that she won't be in as much pain as long as she sticks with it. With this situation, Cody lets us know that they're fighting against science, but with the amount of children and wives and all that they have, they have to look at life optimistically and they're going home with hope. And that is the end of this episode. You all let me know your thoughts down below. Sorry if it was all over the place. I gotta be honest. I really wasn't feeling this episode. I wasn't because I was so upset with the whole Isabel situation because I know that it's going to be several years until she gets, you know, the relief that she needs. And I feel like the situation with Cody and Mary is trash. He doesn't want her. He doesn't want her. 
I don't want a therapist that's not going to just give me the, the, the cold, hard truth. And if that's that you can see that we're not a fit and that it's not going to work and that it's just, you know, it's done, then let it be done. I think that Cody didn't work as hard to salvage his relationship with Mary because he had three other wives. I'm just going to call it like I see it. You all tell me what you think down below. Thanks for joining. Like the video helps the channel. Comment. And if you've been here a few times and you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do that too. Until next time.